Philly Frank. All right, yeah, introduce yourself for the people, man. Tell them a little bit about who y'all are and what it is that y'all got going on. Jameer Shaw, One Half Dope Shows. Dope Shows is a global boutique-style concert promotion company. Uh, Steph, Other Half of Dope Shows. Uh, All, right. All right, so now explain like how y'all connected and how y'all formed the whole Dope Shows situation. Um, I mean, Steph and I met through mutual friends. Um, we was we was just kicking it for a few years prior to actually getting in the business together. We just saw something in each other that we knew a partnership could work. All right. So did y'all have any type of background in music prior to doing this, or like give them that spill? Like, how did y'all made y'all decide to do concerts and stuff like that as opposed to you know something else? I mean, like I feel like we always had a taste palette for like what's dope, especially in entertainment music. Art, all that stuff, like we both had that. So, you know, the concert thing, just curating shows, it was always like that wasn't a hard transition as far as we was concerned. Okay. So when y'all actually did form form the movement or whatever, and then y'all first put y'all show together, what was the first show that y'all did? And explain that experience. Like, how was it? What was the outcome? Give them that whole rundown. Yeah. Um, the first show we did was Fabulous and Jada Kiss. It was here in Philly at the Fillmore. Um, the Freddie vs. Jason show. I mean, it was amazing. It was our first show as a company, Dope Shows. Um, it was a complete sellout. We sold out maybe 10 to, 10 to 12 days before the actual concert. Um, we ended up adding on an after party. It was just a, it was just an amazing experience. All right. Now that's a, you know, that's when I kind of when I first heard of y'all when that show came out you know and it definitely was a was a big situation and also y'all had like a bunch of um well not a bunch but a few open acts from the city that people familiar with so give them that rundown like how that was too far as bringing some of the guys from the city and giving them that look too like so we had uh bugsy um for a show o'malley for a show uh rico havoc um who else uh, black pop black bobby um, as far as like people that you made like notables, um, we had a kid by the name of Hobbs. He from uh, West Philly. Um, who else? As far as notables, that's all I can think of. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's all I can think of. Uh, oh, but that was just always something that we wanted to focus on, and like giving back and making sure that we still put in our city on. Although we, it ain't you can't always book a Philly artist. We always want to make sure that we get in Philly artists. They just do though. Whether right. they up and coming, whether they already on. Some of them is popping more than others, but we want to make sure that we doing our part. Right. So from the the Freddie vs. Jason show, what was your next you know situation following that one? What was the follow up concert? Um, the follow up concert was actually Freddie vs. Jason in Boston. In terms of booking, like we oh, so y'all went from Philly and then y'all went and did it in Boston as well. We did it in Boston, but then the next show that ended up being on the calendar was Rick Ross at the Fillmore here in Philly. But they that was a week apart with the Boston show, so we had two shows going on at once during that promo cycle. Okay, so what was that like working? Well, you know, he a big time artist, been established for years. So what was that situation like? You know, having somebody like that as y'all headliner on that show. It was actually, it was actually. Great, like Ross, he participated in the process of the promo, which is, you know, it's important. Um, like from the gate, he was like liking pictures, put the flyer up, like it was easy, you know what I'm saying? So, um, working with him was good. He was on time, he was at the venue before, probably most of the people got there in the back. He was prompt, his people was prompt. Um, his manager, Black Bo, who passed, up, passed away, rest in peace, he was easy to deal with so you know um ross was good ross was definitely good yeah ross management and his people made it super easy for us and like steph said he participated the whole time um like ross was was saying it was like dming me saying like yo y'all killing this promo or this was going on or yo, I'm, I, he was only required to do x amount of posts he went over and beyond so i mean it was amazing working with ross yeah. i think it come from like him understanding like coming from like nothing, like he came from nothing to blow himself up to something. So I, I think he's the type of artist that's like always looking to like push the culture forward. Like if you see, you know, black guys trying to do something positive, I think he, he respect that. He came across that way when we met him. So, I mean, he was good to work with. 
And people know how people feel about Ross in this city, especially with the meat cosine. So yeah, for sure. Cause like people love Ross here. Right. So I think that's that's probably contributed too. Cause Ross loved the city as well. Right. And that was the rather you than me, um, when he dropped that album, correct? Yeah. Yep. Right. Okay. Yeah, so that so, was that was flaming in the streets at that Right, right, right. Yeah. So that after that was y'all um the follow-up concert after that. Was it the Jeezy one the final mistake? It was Jeezy after that? It was Jeezy after that. Yeah, we did Jeezy in Baltimore that was following the Boston show. Um and we did for that that was more like a that was at Pier Six, so that was like an indoor outdoor um, on the waterfront. So and that, that was kind of like us stepping outside of the box because before then we had did like all the same type of uh, concerts and this became more like festival feel or outdoor feel. Um, and that was a great show as well. I mean, honestly, every artist I feel like that we've worked with, I've had great experience with, or I know Steph probably shared the same, but like they all they all participated. They all made sure they did their piece of it. They all put on a, a dope show. We had, for that show we had Jeezy, YBS Cola. You from Baltimore, right? Yeah, we had uh, PMB Rock. Um, so that's we kind of created the PMB Rock relationship, probably from that show. Um, with my my been great, like the whole time we worked with them. Um, you know, they participated in that show and, and promoting that, and they participated heavily in the in the PMB Rock day that we just. Right, so that was the last, the, the most recent show y'all just did, which was in January, correct? Right. Yeah, it was January 13th. We did two dope shows in one day. Um, so basically, we had a four o'clock show and then an eight o'clock show, both with PNB Rock. The eight o'clock show, we had a lot of guests pop out. Um, a Boogie with the Hoodie and YF and Lucci. Uh, and that show sold out, the, the first show we booked sold out in 15 days. Um, so that's why we had the second one on. Okay, so y'all basically back to back shows for a PNB Rock Day and they both, you know, it was lit. I seen, I see, I wasn't able to make it, but I seen, you know, some pictures and some footage and it looked like it was a good turnout and all that. Yeah, no, it was amazing. Right, right. You just watch, to watch people, you fill the whole venue up, yeah. people leave, and then an hour later you fill it right back up again. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's a crazy, crazy experience, man. So now, moving forward to y'all more recent show that's coming up. And um, March, correct? In the yeah, March, March 23rd, right? March 23rd. So now y'all had a boogie come out to the PME Rock one. So now y'all got him and Don Q coming to the city on the 23rd. Correct. So speak on speak on that situation. What can people expect? You know, why did y'all decide to book them guys to come here? Why y'all make that y'all next show? I mean, I, honestly, Steph was Steph been like a boogie with the hoodie. Um, Steph had been talking about him since we did our first show. Um, and then with this situation, when they came, met, met their management, got introduced to them. Um, was they, they real close with Rock and his management. So it just only made sense. We, we was looking for another show with somebody that we always wanted to work with. So we put it together. We feel like this is what the city need. Um, I, what, what people can expect is just another dope show. Is we gonna make sure that we keep putting dope shows out there that people could come out and enjoy. Um, it, that's what you that's what you can look forward to. All right. All right, so for, for some up and coming guys like y'all, so because y'all just started this, like y'all first show was what in 2017. Yeah. I mean, so y'all fairly, you know, still fresh at this, even though y'all had some nice shows up to this point. So for for somebody that's watching, that's looking to do something like that, like maybe throw some concerts or something like that in the near future, just explain like some of the challenges and stuff that y'all face and how y'all, you know, the process about going about putting on a big concert su such as this. It's, a, it's definitely a lot of challenges. Like it's not, it's not easy. Like it, like everybody, you know, you see the end product, but you know, you don't see all the stuff that go into it. Um, just the planning, the preparation, um, the ups, the downs, you know, things of that nature. And like with the Rick Ross show, like we had a lot of stuff going on before that show that was like, man, like that show couldn't make. It almost didn't happen from the stuff that was going on. Like just right. being able to trust people. As far as booking and stuff like that, so um, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot of ups and downs. Definitely, it's not. It's not all glory. It's like you know, right. it's, it's a lot of things that go behind the scenes. For the, sure. The advice that I would give is if some you do, if this is something that you would be interested in, you got to be a student of it. You really got to work hard at your craft for like getting it out. I mean, I got a long promotion background. Um, Steph got a heavy real estate background. 
So it was like dope. We brought those skill sets to the table when doing this. Um, it's not, I mean, stuff it on the nose, it's not easy. Like I think sometimes people get, we live in the microwave era now, so people just see like the sold out concert and don't necessarily know what all went into it. I would say it's like with anything else, you gotta work super hard. Like this a this a job for us every day. Like we really had this every day trying to figure out. We planning the next two, three years out of what's gonna happen for dope shoes. So I would say anybody inspiring to do anything, not even just concerts, you just gotta put 110% always in. Yeah, sure. Right, right. Okay, so um, what are y'all looking to do ultimately with these shows? Like y'all booking major artists? Do y'all got like a certain list of artists that y'all going after, or y'all just kind of like explain that? Like get them to run down like what y'all is ultimately doing with it? I mean, of course we got bucket, we got a bucket list, right? Like at the end of the day, we got artists that we grew up loving, um, and that of course we would love to put the tie with the dope shows brand. Um, we personally have artists that we working with, um, so. Is, I feel like we definitely want to go in that direction of crossing out some people on the bucket list. We know that we know that then there's going to be emotional attachment to different artists at different times. So we're willing to work with anybody. You can you going to see all, and it's not even just going to all be hip hop in regards to our brand. Like at some point, we're going to venture out and start doing other t genres of music as well. Okay, okay. So let's speak on Philly hip hop for a second. Know what I mean, like, what are y'all thoughts on the current state of, you know, the Philly hip hop scene and stuff like that? Like you said, y'all kind of wanted to create a platform to include some Philly artists on there, even though y'all getting big industry artists. So, like, what are y'all thoughts on the city right now? It's, a lot of, it's always been a lot of talent here. Um, but, you know, just the, the doors that guys like these broke down and, uh, and beat, of course, like, beat really carry the torch for our city like you know those guys coming up under him like that I respect like core obviously um, he's doing like some great things um, who else like uh, I, mean, I think Philly on Philly, Philly on, on the map right, right now like we got we got Rock we got Uzi, Uzi Rock me. yeah me. like I feel like and I like that the underground guys they sticking together yeah like they all working together they all trying to get the they all got different sounds, but they piece them together. I feel like yeah. Rico just got his deal. So even even guys like Bugsy, who's just like he's just like the poster boy for consistency. You know what I'm saying? Like you, whatever you consistent in, like after a while, like it's, it's gonna start to break through. Even if he'll never be like as big as like the biggest guy that you may think of, his consistency will take him places, and I think that's just a lesson for everybody. Like he he built whatever what he got going on just. And it really a short period of time just from consistency. So um, I respect that. I respect what he's doing. Yeah, I'm, lo I'm, lo I'm loving. I'm loving the Philly hip hop scene right now. I just I like what I see. Yeah. I love. The, I feel like at one point we was as a city we was always against each other. Yeah. So it's just dope to see that like all the guys are sticking together. Um, I feel like it's, we gonna we gonna take over hip hop all in all. Like I feel like I see I see the impressions happening already. And you know we just kind of want to be the guys to. In some ways, facilitated like with, with PNB Rock. Like, obviously, he's done big shows before because he did a big show with us. But just to just, just kind of like put it on a platform, like to see the growth of those guys and be able to do two shows in one day and do like four or five thousand people in one day. Like, that's a lot. And that's a that's a deep, that was a good platform for him. And we wanted to give him the best look as possible. We wanted his pictures to look a certain way. We wanted his videos to look a certain way. So, um, I'm sure there's gonna be people. That's going to be growing and we're going to be trying to reach out and do things like that with, with them. If there aren't the people that we're currently working with as well. So, right. I think Philly is in a good place for sure. Right. So for people watching that might be artists themselves and they see y'all got all these big shows, they like, damn, like, is it a way that I can get on? Like, do y'all have, like, slots where those somebody up and coming that y'all not familiar with that's not in y'all circle could have an opportunity to open up? Do y'all do stuff like that? Yeah, so, I mean, every show we every show we do openers, um, I was, there's no real set way of, like, how we do it. It's more so, like, if the music is hot, but we feeling the movement, um, sometimes we reach out, um, and then sometimes people reach out to us, and if, if it makes sense, then we, we'll do it. So I feel like it's not really like a set, not like a set blueprint of how we end up, how, how somebody would open up on a show. 
It's just we even see like with Rico Havoc situation. He opened up on a Raw show. We saw his movement. We was feeling it. I reached out to his management, and then the rest was history. Like he was on the stage. So I feel like it's not. And this is before he got signed. So it's not like a true blueprint of how to get to us. It's like if your movement is dope, we'll reach out. Or if you want to interested in being on the show, reach out. And if it makes sense, we make it work. And sometimes we got constraints as far as like putting people on the show. Like, you know, sometimes as far as time constraints, like how much time we got before the main art, the artists go on. And we want the, the show to be curated and look a certain way. We don't want, you know, fans to get tired. We got like a showcase before they're opening. So it's all about time and it's all about the movement. So my advice to every artist is just work on your movement, work on your craft. Like, you know, just like every, like how you gonna gain fans. We fans of the music, so you know we, we see it. We become fans. We we you know that's that's the best way. That's how Bugsy got on. That's how Rico got on. That's how Sean Sloan got on. Like that's that's how it is. Like I'm a fan of music first, first and foremost. So. All right, all right. So speaking on Sean Sloan, because that's an artist that y'all working with, and he also will be opening up on y'all upcoming show with A Boogie and Don Q. So speak on what about him that stood out to y'all to make y'all want to bring him along? Because it's a lot of artists in Philly, like you said, it's a lot of talent. It's a lot of talent, and the other places y'all went to too, Baltimore or wherever. Like, so what made this guy be the one that y'all wanted, you know, to focus on? I, mean, I, I just think like, uh, like, like I said, I was a fan. You know what I mean? Like, I was a fan of his music. Uh, he got a song, Just Joseph, which is like an amazing piece of art for me. And the, the mob, like, it was the first two songs I heard from him. And it was just like, the music touched me. Like, it touched me. So, and like, the way he, he spoke, the, cl the clairvoyant way he rapped, like, you could hear everything he was saying. I'm a fan of that style. So, um, that's how, that's how that, that relationship kind of came to be. And, um, you know, we, we started talking, we started building a relationship and, uh, you know, just firmed it up. So that's pretty much how it happened. It was really organic. Like it wasn't no, that was my man. I grew up with him, it was organic and I was a fan of the music. So that's pretty much how it happened. It's the kid, Sean J. Y'all rockin' with Philly Fang TV. All right, so yeah, we had threw up your, your sickle cell video on our Instagram page. You know, it's on Worldstar right now. So yeah. speak a little bit on that. Sickle Cell joined me having Sickle Cell. I seen y'all throw it up. I appreciate that. Um, Dougie did that beat. It's on the uh, For a Reason Why project on the Apple Music right now. You can go tune in. Sean Sloan on my Instagram. And that's it. S H A U N S L O A N. Philly Fame TV. Slap. Okay. Alright, man. So, anything else y'all want to let the people know about what y'all got going on and stuff like that? Anything else y'all want to touch on we can get a chance to touch on? I mean, just make sure y'all in the building. March 23rd at the Fillmore, Don Q and A Boogie. Yeah. It's another dope show. Another dope show. We bring it, we trying to bring an experience to the shows. Like, so when people come, they like, man, I was at a dope show. Like, for the money that you pay, you actually get something for it. So that's what we're really trying to bring to the table. Just creating a dope experience. Right. Yeah, make sure y'all follow the Dope Shows page, which is dope underscore shows underscore um, for all updates and up and coming events and shows that we have in the future all right all right man i definitely commend y'all guys so you know doing what y'all doing because it's definitely bringing some light in the city as far as like bringing them big artists here and letting you know local artists open up for them it's definitely a good look so salute to y'all on that man all right man we signing out man dope shows philly fame tv this is philly fame we them people that'll give you game Say they